In this lecture, we are going to see the SQL execution plan. When we execute SQL statement in the Snowflake, it generates the execution plan. It is very important to understand the execution plan because by using the execution plan, we can understand the long running queries and how to optimize the SQL statement which are using in your programming. In order to demonstrate the execution plan, we are going to use the database which is already present in the trial version of Snowflake. As we are using the trial version here, we have the three databases already configured and those are demo underscore db, Snowflake sample data and util underscore db. If you are working on real time project, you will have the dedicated database, you might need to use that. These databases are already available in the database tab, which you can see here. Then this warehouse, the trial version comes with a compute dub underscore wh that is the warehouse. You can create your own warehouse here and you can use that. If dedicated warehouse are assigned to your role, you have to use those warehouse. In order to execute the SQL statement, we are going to use the worksheets. Here we can type the SQL statement to execute. Few things here we have to note. On the right hand side, we can see we are currently using the role sysadmin. If you are using any dedicated role, you have to make sure you have the permissions to that role to execute the SQL statement. Then we are using the compute warehouse, which is extra small. In your project, you might have a dedicated warehouse. You have, you have to use that. Regarding the database and schema. Here we are not selecting database and schema. Of course, you can select it if you want. But I'm going to show how to select the database and schema at the runtime instead of in this configuration. Let's go ahead and use one of the database. For demo purpose, we are going to use a database named Snowflake Sample Data. Let's expand it. Under this database, we have multiple schemas such as information schema and other custom schemas. If you expand demo DB or util DB, you'll see two things. Here we can see the schema named information schema and the public schema already present. So when we create any new database, these two schemas are automatically created. You can create additional schemas as per your need, the way it is created under the Snowflake sample data. Now let's go ahead and select the Snowflake sample data. We are going to use the schema name tpch underscore sf1000. Let's go ahead and expand it. It has multiple tables such as customer, jcustomer and so on. If I select or mouse over on any one of this table, it shows the metadata. It shows the name of table that is customer, on which date and the time it got created, how many records this table contains and the size of this table. If you just select this table, the additional information is automatically get populated at the bottom of this screen. It shows the table, it shows the column names and it's a data type. If you need more information about these columns, uh, whether it's a nullable or whether it's a primary key, then what you have to do, you have to select this table and select these three dots and click on that and then click on the view details. It will show the details of this table on the right hand side, it will show the table name, column name, then type of column, whether it's in a label, whether, whether it has a default value, primary key, unique key, all these property are shown here. Now what we are going to do, we are going to write the SQL statement. Let's start with the select start from. Now in order to type the name, you can refer the left hand side panel or other option we have is. We can go to this three dot button and click the option named as a place name in SQL. So this will place the name of database. It will also select the schema name and then table name. As we can see, we have not selected the table name or database and the schema name on right hand side. However, we are using those in our SQL statement. So that will be accordingly executed. I'll use the semicomma at the end of this statement. 
Let's go ahead and execute it. When I execute the statement, it will show that execution is going on and it will also generate the one query ID. Let's go ahead and select the query ID. It will take us to this detail page. It will show us the status the query is running. The user who executed this query is listed, that is Rona. We are using the warehouse, compute warehouse. The start time is given here. End time it will be populated once the query is completed. Then it will show the how long this query is running, number of bytes it is scanned, number of rows it is processed, and the unique query ID. This query ID is unique for this statement. It is picked of the environment where you are is executing this query, the same query ID will be maintained. So this will be very helpful to analyze the queries or to understand your execution plan. I'll do it, it already have the auto refresh. You can also use this option called refresh. It will give the more details. So as I, as I just refresh it, it just populated some additional things like the duration, the scan byte, etc. Now I'm going to see what's going on in the execution plan. That you can see under the profile tab. As we can see, there are two main actions are going on. If I select the result action, it pops up this option which says result is processing. Table scan is 22%. So if you go to the detail page, the query is still running, but at the runtime, I can see the execution plan. The table scan is 22% and result processing took 53%. Let me do the refresh one more time. Now the scanning and the result, it's showing the irrespective percentage. The query is still running. Let's see the table scan, what are the things that are happening. On the table scan level, it is processing is taking almost 36%. Local disk IO is 1%. Remote disk IO is 62%. We'll see what is local disk I.O. and remote disk I.O. in our separate lecture. Then synchronization is taking 0%. We have the statistics also. The scan processing is 76%. Byte scan around 8 GB. Percentage scan from cache is 0. We'll have the detailed lecture on the caching, which happens in the Snowflake. And that time we'll see what is this property is. Then we have the pruning, it is scanning around 754 partitions and there are total 990 partitions. It also provides some additional details such as table name and columns, etc. Let's go ahead and refresh one more time. This time it shows the processing is completed. Let me go back to this table scan and this is the final result. It local scan is 2% and remote is 58% and processing to 40%. For the result showing, so as we say in the execution, first thing happen is scanning on the table and the second thing happening is showing that result to the end client. So our application or this worksheet is nothing but the end client for this SQL statement and it is showing the result on the screen. So when I say the result on the screen, so this is the screen, it is showing on this. So this result took almost 53% of processing. So when it is processing, it is have creating two sub processes. One is processing, which is almost 99%. And the other one is synchronization, which took 1%. It process around 9 GB of data. And it has a list of attributes here. If you're selecting multiple columns, then those will be listed here. Here, two important things to remember. When we execute SQL statement, it scan the complete table. If you just need to review a few records, always prefer to write the limit clause or the where clause. That way, you don't have to execute this statement against complete table because it involves the cost. When we execute a statement against the complete table, the processing will take a longer time. And when it takes longer time, we need to pay more for the, the execution time. The second thing is number of columns. 
When we select more number of columns in the SQL statement, for example, if you use select star from table, in that case, we are selecting all the columns from the table. But if you limit the number of columns in your select statement, the number of record processed in the result set will be less and it will take the less amount of processing. Hence, you will be saving the money as well as time by writing or by considering those two things. In summary, we understand that the execution plan is helpful to understand the long running queries and tuning it. We can tweak the queries by adding the limit and where clause to reduce the number of records in the result set. We can also optimize the query by reducing the number of columns in the select statement. In the next lecture, we are going to see what is remote and local I.O.